I'm going to get started on the presentation tonight again. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it. Uh, we do these webinars every Wednesday. We try to pick new topics. We try to find things that we think that can help people educate to get into the market. So it's our Wednesday case study. Uh, we'll get to the next slide here. So disclaimer, this is an educational series. We are not offering financial advice, accounting advice, legal advice. We are just talking about what Massive Capital does and why do we like the market of Colorado. Always do your own due diligence and make sure that you do that before you invest in any syndication. All right, so just in case you've missed any of these events, you're gonna wanna come. So we've changed it up a little bit that we're gonna be doing capital raising and asset management on one event. We found that it would be a little easier for people if we combine the events. So it's happening this June 22nd in Dallas, Texas. Um, I put a link in the chat there where you can sign up. So we're gonna talk a lot about raising capital. We haven't, and asset management. So again, this is an all day event. It is only in person in Dallas, Texas. And it's a long day. We make everybody work hard. It's a workshop. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. We will not let you fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, we just did it uh, last Saturday. We had 45 folks on uh, on just analyzing and buying multifamily in a day. It was a really great day. We were so hot, the fire alarms at the hotel went off. <laughs> So the, it was amazing. We took a little break and there was this huge crack of thunder and lightning and the fire alarms, it set the fire alarms off in the building. So, but uh, I blame it on us that we were so, Sanjay was so hot presenting lots of, lots of great things. So we're going to talk a little bit about massive capital, our value add investors and partners. Today, we're doing our underwriting series about Colorado, mostly going to focus on Denver. Next week in our series, we're going to be talking actually North and South Carolina, but we only have assets right now in North Carolina, but we love the Carolinas. We're going to talk about why, and then we always have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So you can see the map on the top right here. As it comes up, we're very Texas focused, obviously, but we do have assets in Denver, Colorado, assets in North Carolina, assets just south of Atlanta, Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Warner Robins, which is actually south of Macon. Um, so it's definitely something. On the left hand side, you'll see that Massive Capital is involved in equity in the fund, triple net brokerage. So triple net is on the resale side, along with the property management company. And we do that through our partners, Realty One. We're involved in land management, land, sorry, land development, triple net construction. We have a tech. And then, of course, we have the Massive Masters, where our, it's a pathway to GP for folks that want to go from the passive investing over to the active investing. So if you look at our partner, Realty One, on the top there, they have $290 million in assets under management. And Massive Capital has $203 million in assets under management. We're getting real close to that half a billion dollar mark. So we're going to have to have a massive party when we hit that. So... Um, and we are owner operators of value add multifamily and developers of triple net retail and retail. And one of the things here we talk a little bit about is we are looking for people to be able to send us deals. So I want to make sure that I'm clear. Don't send us the deal that your broker sent to 100 people. Um, we've already got that deal. We are looking for unique situations where you have some sort of in some sort of special circumstance where you've been able to get something off market, or if you're a landowner and you're in a AAA location, and especially in the Texas market, but we're also looking in Denver and Tampa and Phoenix on the retail side, um, we're definitely interested in partnering with folks that have land development and want somebody to come in and develop the land. So that's something we're very interested in. So, Oh, we got the old webinar date here too. So that's what happened. So we don't worry about the date of the webinar. There's still room for you to get into the Horizon investment. So use that link that I put up earlier. 
Um, and we can also send you a replay. Uh, we did a really good update webinar for our Horizon, which is 204 units. We only have a couple of spots left. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Roland's uh, uncle was one of our last investors to get into it, so we appreciate that. Um, and if you want to click ahead one more, Sanjay. So we just click them all the way through. So this is all of the things that we're involved in. So we right now have, we've closed 15 deals. We have nine LOIs out right now. We think two or three of those are pretty serious. We're pretty close on a couple. We can't disclose them just yet. And if you are associated with Massive Capital and you are interested in investing, we can't discuss it on this webinar, but we do have a 506B deal. So again, if you're connected with Massive Capital, you would have gotten a direct email just because you're listed as uh, someone we have an existing relationship with. Uh, just reach out to us if you're interested. And if you don't have an existing relationship, I want to make sure you know you're missing out. So you've got to book a call with someone at Massive Capital. We've got to get to know you. We take the rules very seriously, and we want to make sure that we give everybody an opportunity to invest. Uh, Candice, thank you for putting the link in. And there's also a QR code if you're interested. This is a great property. Um, and if you're interested at all, ask about the webinar that we just did, because we talk about this is true education of value add. We go through the things we've already done in our first few months of ownership and how that it's changed the trajectory of the property. So it's a really good way to be able to do it. All right. So we're gonna talk a little bit about group learning by actually doing, okay? One of the things that when we created the Massive Mastermind, we wanted to make sure that we created an environment where people are actually doing things. Many mentor programs say, here's the information, go find a partner, good luck. Massive Capital, what we wanna do is we wanna to work together with the folks that are in our mastermind. We wanna to brainstorm together. We wanna to work on deals together. And then we wanna be able to take down deals together. And when we take down deals together, we provide the mechanism where you'll be able to become a general partner. You'll be able to be an active person in the deal and you'll be able to attend property management calls, asset management calls. You'll be able to talk directly with your investors. So it's a really good way to be able to provide that environment where you can you can participate with us. Uh, we've created 24 general partners in the last two years, and we're super proud of that. So we obviously we have multifamily new development. Uh, we have opportunities for limited partners, investors. Um, we have where we could be a lead and a co-sponsor general partners. And we also have a couple of deals where we do JV deals. So three of our 15 deals are actually JV deals where we've partnered with folks. And these are mostly with people where we took down a piece of land and we're ready to take it to the next level. And then obviously through the left-hand side, all of those done are through a syndication model. And if you don't know anything about syndication model, just book a time with us to talk. We're happy to explain it all to you. So again, I already posted the link. We're looking for partners. So we purchased land off market only. We're interested in partnering with retail joint venture development. Um, we can do from two to 40 acres for that. Uh, we also can do all of the things, new acquisition and asset management advisory, debt and loan guarantor, and then deal sourcing, consulting, full contract services. So Massive Capital has all the different things. And then the last one that we have is where we talk about our mastermind. So if you want to cl click one more. So the education and the mastermind, we're super excited about our program. Um, it's, it is really something that uh, we think is the way that people can get from being passive to active quickly. And so I'm going to pop in a link here about it. And again, book a call with anyone in the investor relations team. We would love to show you how you can be a partner with us. Awesome. And then under work. So this, this is one thing. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Learning by actually doing. I already said this before. I have, I can see into the future. I know what slides are coming. <laughs> So it takes about three to five years for a full. So if you look at the acquisition side, right, all of the things underwriting, LOI, all of those things. So when we're going through a journey, we're talking with our mastermind students 
all about the acquisition side. So we just had our acquisition. We'll have another class coming up, but it's super important to understand everything. Then we talk a lot about debt and equity. Who guarantees a loan? Who can do things? How do we do it? How do you communicate with investors? So we take all of those things and we add it in. And then obviously the last one is asset management. Many, many, many folks tell you that all the work is done in acquisitions and underwriting. Here to tell you the real work starts in this last phase here, okay? I'm living proof, I'm doing it, I've been there. It's super hard. So what really happens is, what really the rubber meets the road is when you are operating the property. That's where investor returns can be maximized. So again, if you're interested in seeing what we've been doing on Horizon, we went through it in quite detail. We spent, we just talked about, this is what we said we would do, and here's what we've done. And again, in this market, to be buy a property that is already out of its interest only period and still be cash flow positive, it takes hard work in asset management. And this is where the money is made, right? You obviously you have to buy right and you have to make sure that you're paying the right price for a deal. And then you have to be able to finance and get partners. But uh, that is the big kind of final thing that our mastermind does is help people really understand what does it take to truly add value to a property. So again, there's the underwriting, making sure that you understand all your markets, what people tend to do. You want me to go through this, Trevor? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Um, good job, that's good, Trevor. Um, and the way we think, um, as, as we go through our massive masters, you know, the conventional thinking is wherever you're located, you start uh, in that area, one to two hour driving distance, go with what you can handle. So given your balance sheet, given your liquidity, uh, your experience, your comfort, risk appetite, uh, get to know the local brokers and, you know, you get to the off-market deals, right? And then, you know, the way we do, and we look at unconven unconventional thinking, you know, start wherever. Um, remember, where you start is doesn't mean you're doing a deal there yet, right? Simulate a purchase. You look to build a team that supports the MSA. Um, and this is the one of the most important part is the team. Because uh, commercial real estate is a team sport. Nobody does it on their own. You can do small deals on your own, but if you want to grow, you want to do more, it's there. Um, you know, you underwrite multiple cities in that area uh, just, just for your uh, increasing your odds. Uh, it's very local. So then you do have to get to know the local with your team. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, you got to master that underwriting with the local support, local help. And then you identify the deal and make, make the deal work. So uh, the way we look at it from an acquisition perspective, you know, to this day, we have uh, over actually 1,100 deals that we have underwritten and archived that did not work for us. Uh, kind of shows the growth over time since the beginning of 22 to now of uh, the number of deals we have underwritten. The Q, Q2 24 is still underway. Um, kind of shows the map of the locations we have underwritten deal. Uh, more, very Texas heavy, of course, but um, in few other areas. We have monday.com now as our workflow uh, full end-to-end -end, uh, from a deal coming in to napkin underwriting, detail underwriting, and going there. Red IQ supports the underwriting and the our Excel model for underwriting. And of course, the Client Harbor, our CRM uh, and database for uh, capital raising and going through this. So, you know, these things are backed by CoStar, LoopNet, and Reonomy. So there's a lot of good data. Of course, CoStar is kind of the, one of the cornerstone of uh, commercial real estate data and, and Reonomy uh, to get to some of the data. So we will look at some of the data here um, for this. Um, 
And, you know, one of the thing to look at is any company you look at, the economic profits are dependent on the industry that you operate in. Uh, so company effect, um, industry effect is dominated by the company effect itself. So, you know, that's where the, uh, in the industry, the location is important. And, you know, that's what we look at and, and uh, go from there. So, um, so our performers are, uh, you know, the very uh, buy box that we define based on the city, uh, county zip codes, income and population, uh, our own understanding of location and what we are comfortable with. And of course, the more, one of the most important one is the population. Is the demographic growing, um, the median income growing? So a very important part of this. So, um, so for any deal, the way we break it out, uh, and this is more theoretical. And as we go further, I'll have the more details on this with specific market. Uh, you know, on a given location, you have your revenue and the op uh, operational expenses. Within each, there is a controllable and uncontrollable component. So from the revenue side, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a control on the rent growth, uh, the market drive, the value add. So if you have a nicer unit, you can increase the rent. Uh, on the uncontrollable side, the population and the income you really have no control over that. The market is the market. So you want to go into the market that are growing. The income is, you know, is supported by the rent that you're looking to go at and the future uh, growth is there. Similarly, on the expense side, the uncontrollables uh, expenses, taxes and insurance, you have very little control. So again, going into a location, insurance is whatever it is, you know, uh, Houston versus uh, Dallas, right, in Texas. So uh, Colorado tends to be a relatively lower uh, insurance market. Uh, weather, usual weather versus a lot of weather events that happen. A similar thing for the taxes. Uh, you know, very little control. It is what it is and how it's taxed. Whereas on the could all the other costs are controllable in some way, shape, or form. Uh, labor costs, uh, you know, as technology gets more and more part of your uh, operations every day, you know, a lot of it, a lot of the processes are getting automated, and same process is being done with less uh, manual labor. Uh, so labor costs, you have some control. Uh, utilities various initiatives to lower the utility costs, uh, maintenance, you know, good maintenance program repairs uh, and other miscellaneous, the admin, the contract, legal services type of costs are all controllable, right? So we kind of control those and uh, go for those uh, from our... So, uh, you know, when we take this bucket for this, and compare for the Denver uh, market to, just to compare to another market, Houston, um, from an operating expenses perspective, um, this, this table here kind of lists for the Denver market uh, out of, uh, you know, what the, what out of $1, what, what is your cost, annual cost per square foot for a given market. So on an annual basis, 50 cents is on the, uh, the property management. And if you were to compare that to Houston, it's a little bit cheaper, right? Admin uh, is a little cheaper. Uh, overall, uh, you know, the biggest ones, the taxes and insurance. So 27 cents in Denver compared to Houston, 46 cents uh, per square foot annual cost. And taxes all more than double in Houston as compared to Denver. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a it's a huge difference. And what that all that translates into is, if you were to, uh, you know, all of this combined goes into the expense ratios. So, 
uh, in Denver and generally Colorado market, and you can see some of the other Colorado markets, there is a slight, slight variation between different markets within Colorado area. Uh, but, you know, more or less in that 50 cents range for the management. Uh, and of course, the biggest buckets are the insurance and taxes. So insurance is in a very similar uh, high 20s uh, bucket and tax, uh, taxes in the 60 to 80 cent range for taxes. Uh, what that means is if you were to earn one dollar in, in, uh, in rent, rental income, uh, uh, all of these numbers added up, it goes about 30 to 35 percent in expense ratio across the uh, Denver, Colorado market. So every one dollar increase in rent, uh, you have 30 cents that goes towards your expenses and 70 cents for Colorado market, uh, more or less, uh, is going towards your NOI. So every dollar increase in rent has a lot higher return towards your value of the property. Now, uh, the, the other side is also applicable, meaning $1 decrease in your rent is a lot higher hit to your NOI and a lot higher um, uh, hit to your value. Now, uh, sometimes the higher ex uh, operational expense ratios hurt because when you lose that $1 of your rental income, you don't necessarily lose the 50 to 60 cents of your uh, expenses. So expenses of 50, 60 cents per $1 stays there when you lose the income. So higher uh, expense ratio markets like Texas can be very detrimental when you lose that uh, $1 in income, potentially from vacancy, delinquency, loss to lease, or any of the markets. Uh, so, you know, uh, from that perspective, Denver market, we like the Colorado market because um, for every dollar increase, the increase in value is a lot higher. And if you lose that $1 in income, impact towards your cost is still that 30 cents that you have to shell out of your pocket. So it's a, it's a smaller impact to your, your bottom line. So, so anyway, th this is kind of the comparison of the market and uh, insurance taxes being the biggest buckets there. Um, and just comparing against another market, you know, Dallas against Houston. Uh, so, you know, you can see the uh, $1.63, so Dallas is very high on taxes as compared to even Houston. And as we were looking at, uh, your, your uh, Colorado market is all, less than half of our, our Texas market in terms of taxes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a big, big uh, variation of, uh, of the markets. So we, we love uh, Colorado market just for that reason. We have a lot better control of our destiny from that perspective, right? Uh, some of the space and demand uh, deliveries. So uh, just looking at a historical market, uh, the blue, blue bar here is the absorption of number of units. So absorption means the, the, because of the population growth, either organically within the state, uh, you know, the young people are living there and they are, you know, having more kids and kids are staying locally or they're moving out, as well as the people moving in from the other markets uh, in coming into the state. So um, absorption is that demand for the market. And then the deliveries is the how many new, new units are coming online. So deliveries is kind of looked at as a supply. So as you can see in the Denver market in 18, uh, supply, demand was higher than the supply. Uh, 19, it kind of uh, evened out. And then uh, you go to the 2020, uh, very even. And then the 2021, the demand way outpaced the supply. Um, and then of course, right after, as the interest rates start to uh, go up, 
the supply continued and then the demand uh, really died. No, no new absorption, no new demand. And then it came right back up in 2023. And 2024 is continuing. We are halfway into the market. Uh, so these are absolute numbers, not percentages. So, you know, this will come up and we think it'll, it'll line up pretty much close to the 2023 numbers, not too far off from 2023, but the supplies are higher still as compared to the demand. So what that leads to is your vacancy and the effective rents. So the supply and demand from this directly impacts a vacancy and effective rent which has the impact on our NOI, our, our value for the property, as we saw from the previous, uh, these graphs, how, you know, how those impact. So, uh, you know, looking at the 2022 data, uh, I'm sorry, 2018 data, um, blue bars are the effective rents on average across various properties uh, and the vacancy rate. So, uh, you know, the, the uh, overall, the, the Colorado market have a generally in a five to six percent uh, vacancy rate, the green line. And then during right after the COVID vacancy dropped and then it, it's right back to it, kind of the average where it is. And now it's one of the highest uh, vacancy rates on average across uh, this market historically. Uh, with that said, the rents have gone up. Uh, right after COVID, um, as the people were moving, Colorado market saw a huge move to Colorado because of the healthier lifestyle. A lot of the, lot of the um, people were moving to Colorado close to mountains, especially Denver, Col uh, Colorado Springs, uh, close to mountains, uh, activities, various things. So saw those jump in the rents as a result. And you know the increase in rents have continued, uh, effective rent, and then in 23, yeah, the interest rates had gone up, uh, slight dip, uh, or maintaining more or less in that area for the rents. So, um, as we look at those uh, similar uh, statistics across the uh, sub markets for for Colorado. Uh, Central is pretty much the Denver, and then, you know, you go north, east, west, south. Um, the, the, you have the number of inventory of units, the Q1 that are delivered, year-over-year uh, -year inventory growth, so inventory still continues to grow. Um, under construction units that will be coming online, Q1 net absorption, this is 2024 data, um, and most of this data is sourced through the real page. Uh, vacancy rate in those high seven, uh, high six, seven percent range that we continue to see. Uh, again, quite a big jump in the vacancy rate in terms of percentages. Um, and the uh, average effective unit rent, uh, again, going over the rent growth, uh, you know, there's a slight increase, but not a, a huge increase on the on the rents. So, so generally, you know, even this rent, um, remember this is a 30% that goes towards your expenses and then 70% towards NOI. So the valuation tends to be higher in, in Colorado market resulting from these rents. So, so if I have a 1700 average uh, rent uh, building in Houston or Texas, um, you would have about a 40% higher valuation in, in Colorado, a Denver market for a similarly priced rental uh, market. So, so that's, that's kind of the prepared material that I have for the Colorado market showing the statistics. And just like for comparison purposes, um, you know, the total inventory across Colorado, uh, you know, 300-ish thousand compared to Houston and Denver where uh, you know, these inventory units is in million just for each market. So just from a size perspective, volume perspective, uh, Texas is a, a behemoth compared to the Colorado market. So I will stop there for whatever the pre prepared material we had. Uh, again, 
all of these webinars are brought to you by Massive Masters, which was the program that uh, Trevor talked about. We have um, we have this. Um, questions, are there any questions in the I didn't chat? see any questions in the chat other than I asked a question. Who wants to keep 70 cents on every dollar you earn? compared to 50 cents in the Texas market. It's a big difference. I was very shocked when I learned that. Yeah, yeah, me too. When I learned that, uh, you know, for a relatively simple, like a 1700 uh, rent per, per month rent unit uh, in Denver, when we, were, we start looking, you know, may go for 300,000 a door. Whereas a similar rent, you come to Texas, it's a, uh, you know, maybe 150, 160, 170 a door. So quite quite a big difference in the pricing when you go from one market to the other markets. Yeah, I I I'll, I'll never forget the first time we I looked at the Denver deal that we were buying. It it was built in 1959, which is the same year I was built in, and it was still going. So it gave me hope that I'm still got some value in me if I can keep my keep myself going. So, but it's a very nice property. Um, I know you've been there a couple of times. I'm super excited. Um, and definitely we have deals coming up for 2024, Sandy. We do have one right now. Just reach out to me because um, you have an existing relationship where we have a webinar coming up. Um, so just re reach out to me, make sure you attend that. And then, as I said, we have nine LOIs out. We feel pretty good about two of them. Um, and we just got to make sure we, we get them. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Any questions? Question from Sandy. Yes, we do have any upcoming deal. We do have one uh, one active, and then we have two more LOIs almost finalized. We'll be bringing those to market. And then we have two other new development deal, one here in Dallas, one in Houston. Uh, those are kind of a town center type of development in downtown areas of those cities. So we're really looking forward to those. And Sandy, stay in touch with us. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll send you and a I, note. And maybe, Mike, if you want to talk about the next couple of slides, sir. Yeah, well, hold on. I was also oh. um, just a, a Peter, I know, was driving and he's in the yeah. Denver market. And so I wasn't expecting him to put any questions or comments in the chat. But I just wanted some feedback maybe from him about some yeah. of what, what we shared and and kind of what you guys see being a broker out yes. there. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you guys are pretty much spot on with all the information and the data that you've collected. Um, one of the things that I want to add is there's going to be a lot of multifamily properties coming due here uh, in 2025 and 2026 that were purchased in 20 and 21 when the interest rates were still low. Their five-year arms are coming due. And with the interest rates where they are right now, we can strategically figure out how to value engineer a new loan you know, with either, you know, you guys or family office or something like that of taking down these assets, the owners are going to be upside down as soon as they try to refinance. So that's one thing that we're working towards. Yeah, th thank you, Peter. And, and actually, we're working on one San Antonio deal, some creative where the seller is out of money. They really need their negative cash flow right now um so we're working some creative deal there structure to kind of take over the llc pay off some of the bills you know maybe leave them in the deal but they really need to get the occupancy up uh turn the units and get occupancy and the deal will cash flow nicely um and their interest expense is so high they just don't have any money left to turn the units so yeah. absolutely Are you I agree. Just because I'm driving to the vacancy rates that you guys are quoting, is that on class A, B, or C properties or generally? Oh, yeah. So, Peter, yes, good question. Uh, just, just for the sake of um, this presentation, this is kind of an aggregate at a overall market level across all property multifamily types. Um, but, you know, but of course, you know, CoStar Real Page have detailed data to kind of break it down. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, this is an aggregate. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to shoot you guys an email uh, when I get back to the office tomorrow. And I'd love to kind of touch base, have a separate conversation with you guys. 
Okay, yeah, absolutely. Love to talk. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the input there. Anyone, uh, does anyone else, if you guys had any questions as we go forward here, you know, continue to put them in the chat. We we also saved you, you know, every, there was some uh, pain tonight, no uh, surveys, no polls tonight. Uh, so everybody got free on the polls and surveys tonight uh, from this. Great. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought I had my video on. Sorry, guys. Uh, so great uh, presentation there, um, Sanjay, Trevor, really appreciate it. Candace for keeping us running on things back end as well. Again, you know, we're, our Massive Masters is a, you know, it, it's a community and it it's a, it's a highly vetted community, you know, and we look at for business owners and existing real estate owners or, you know, corporate employees that, that really want to be going the next step and and have a support of of a solid team behind them not uh, necessarily just as you know a coaching program per se but actually the full support of the team and and the fact that it's a you know that we have a team and a company built out around this uh, our team is all full time and you saw that at the beginning so so that is a, a significant uh, unique uh, piece of, of how the massive masters continues to get built out and, and who we're looking for for that. Uh, next slide, please. Thank. And uh, yeah, so back on that, uh, the, um, you know, if you want to again connect with any of our deals, scan the QR code here. It, there is no obligation to, to sign up, to sign in. There, you're not obligated to pay anything there's no fees there's no nothing there you you get a chance to get into our portal see our deals be part of you know the the as well uh, in that process so and the bit more so uh, this may not be for, you know, again, we talk about it. It may not be for everyone. It may not be for you. Uh, it, it uh, you know, on the, the base level, it does look expensive sometimes. It uh, can be challenging and it can be fun at the same time when we talk about the challenging. Uh, but, you know, we, we put people to work. People go to work with us, right? Uh, so it is a time investment in, you know, a time of your time investment, our time investment, right? So we're there every day doing this and you guys are, whoever joins is there every day with us doing this. And uh, again, it's not, it's okay, right? If it's not for everyone, that's fine. And we understand that. So those that feel they, they feel qualified or have want to put in the effort, want to really become a general partner, want to have a quality support team with all the tools. And, that, and that's the key thing. That's all the tools and technology that comes with this uh, that you don't typically see in many other uh, of, of the masters or masterminds or, or things out there. Uh, that is a, a big piece of what's offered here. So again, take a look at it, join us um, and, um, Feel free to uh, reach out to Trevor, Candace, myself, um, Sanjay, if you're interested. A little more is, you know, our community. We 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 build up through a community. We call it the the whole the whole structure or um, uh, pillars, I guess. The massive five uh, things is is a lot through the community. Uh, our again, our training and education is not really just training and education, it's actually going in and lab environment, doing work together, working together, uh, being on calls daily, right? We're, we're, we're there all day and we're connecting with our, our members, our masters all day long. The tools I mentioned, uh, uh, it's significant, right? 
Sanjay covered that earlier, Red IQ, Monday.com, the CRM, uh, Client Harbor, you know, everything that comes with all of that. Uh, being able to be part of all of our marketing and events. And and, and one of the cool things is we we bring everybody up on the stage right with us, right? So you we do virtual conferences and that brings everybody to join with us on those conferences. Or when we do, do live, we talk with the people that are doing deals. So it's a 90-day roadmap uh, to get you there. You join the mastermind, you go through a, a series of workflows and progression of tests along the way. And it means actually doing things, submitting deals, submitting LOIs, underwriting 10 deals, uh, getting your CRM up and running, getting your PFS completed and bios updated, walking properties, uh, attending you know, our lab sessions and, and more and more than that. So getting your cash flow portal, getting those things set up, and then you decide where you're going to go, and then you get a chance to test, right? Do I want to do asset management? Do I want to lean into finding deals and acquisitions? Or do I want to be just investor relations and capital raising fund to fund? So you get a test, you get to work and do all of those as you go. So perfect, uh, you know, opportunity. And the cool thing is like, you know, you've always got a, a back, you know, supporting backup plan with massive capital all the way. Thank you very much.